Hello my dear friends, how is it going? I'm Ari Therger and today I'm going to talk about the Vegvisir, an Icelandic magic stave, Gaudrastafur, which has been a victim of so much nonsense, it's small wonder the great majority of us are more familiar with the fiction surrounding this symbol rather than the actual historical background, which is a shame. <laughs> Just like in the previous video concerning the Aiki Sjalmur, Today I will solely focus on the history behind this symbol and what is truly known of it. There are plenty of esoteric authors out there that have made quite the mockery concerning this symbol uh, for the sake of uh, personal profit by deceiving the public and that is indeed something that bothers me as you can see uh, when people keep feeding the same gibberish for personal gain and the public is kept in the dark in ignorance and that that's just not right. Um, it, <laughs> it's too early in the morning in, in here at least, uh, just before going to work, so I want to get right into it. Although, allow me a few words, <laughs> please. Uh, if by any chance you haven't watched the previous video concerning the Aigi Sjalmur, I suggest you watch it so you may have a um, better understanding of the historical background concerning Icelandic magic staves, especially the Aigi Sjalmur type of symbols that gave origins to the Vegvisir, to avoid having to repeat it all over again for your own sake, to save you from having to hear it all over again. Also, the bibliography for this video is practically the same one as the previous video, aside from the ones I shall present throughout this video, uh, like the Huld manuscript, for instance, but you can check those sources by the end of the of, of the previous video and this video anyway. Now, with no more delay, let's start our today's video, my dear friends. Please. Well, the Vegvisir is often translated to a symbol to guide the way, a path guide, although the literal translation is signpost. <laughs> a better English word for it would be waymark, uh, which I think uh, it better represents the very name for this symbol. Apart from the Aegis Yalmur, Vegvisir is one of the most famous Gadrastafir, or uh, magic symbols, magic staves. It became very popular due to pop culture, due to an extensive amount of pseudo-historical notions that developed around it, usually very contradictory notions, often neglecting actual historical evidences, and therefore such notions should be refuted, <laughs> because they really are notions that have nothing to do with the history of this symbol. The Vegvisir appears in its current form in a manuscript from the second half of the 19th century. To be more precise, it is dated to the year 1860, so it is a symbol that it isn't even 200 years old a symbol that was created nearly 800 years after the end of the so-called Viking Age, and this symbol appears in the paper manuscript kept in the Icelandic National Library, known as the Huld Manuscript. Huld in the sense of uh, a cult, uh, as in hidden concealment. Um, in the description of this video I shall leave the link to the official website where you can consult the manuscript by yourself. This manuscript is a collection of figures, letters and numbers for writing and code messages, while the last section includes a series of symbols with captions that illustrate the powers and intent or the intention of each symbol. You will certainly notice that there are references to biblical figures such as David or Solomon, uh, which is perfectly normal as the origins of these symbols come from Eastern European Renaissance esotericism with its basis in Jewish culture, more precisely in one of the best known and most widespread grimoires of European esotericism and occultism, the Key of Solomon. For more information about this historical cultural base, check the previous video I've mentioned concerning the Aigi Sjalmur, or the videos I'll leave suggested at the end of this very video today. As many authors have been saying, especially some well-known ones who are usually the primary sources of those who are starting with the study of the runes, more focused on 
magic and the occult uh, and not the history of the runes. Well, um, they say that these symbols such as the Veg Visir and Aegis Yalmur are an evolution from the combined and overlapping runic alphabetic letters. But it is not possible to trace an evolution of these symbols from the runes. Between the pre period when, when runes were widely used as a means of writing and the period when the Gadra Stafir appeared in Icelandic manuscripts, there is a period of 500 years that separate these historical moments. That is, half a century has passed in, in which there is absolutely nothing that indicates a continuous evolution of the runes into these symbols. Absolutely nothing. These Icelandic symbols appear in Iceland's history as if it were out of nowhere, <laughs> suddenly, from the 16th century onwards. And from then onwards, it began an evolutionary process of these symbols until the 19th century. There are no examples of Gadra Stafir, Icelandic magic staves, such as the Aegis Jarmur and later on the Veg Visir, from medieval times, much less from the Viking Age. And the Veg Visir was not a symbol engraved on Viking ships, as some authors continue to assert. In fact, if we take into account that the Viking period in Iceland ends in the year 1000, with Catholicism being accepted by the majority in assembly, as the official religion of Iceland, then more than 800 years ha have passed between the Viking period and the first testimony of the Veg Visir. And in that period, more than 800 years, <laughs> there is no trace of a Veg Visir or runic symbology that, that led to the evolution of symbols that later became symbols such as the Aegis Yalmur and Veg Visir. Again, I repeat that the origins of these symbols lies in the development of an esoteric tradition from continental Europe, which eventually appears in Iceland in the 16th century. Hence, these symbols suddenly appear as if out of nowhere. And after that period, the symbols of esoteric Jewish cultural origin have an artistic evolution in Iceland independently and essentially from the Renaissance period. I think it suffices to see, once again, the symbology present in the grimoire Key of Solomon and compare it with the Icelandic symbols of the same genre, whose similarities are due more to the fact that, in the case of the Gadra Stafir, they are complex geometric symbols in which other symbols are placed and assembled. Once again, I think it will do well to review that in the 15th century we have a magical Greek Byzantine text, the Harley Code 5596, that I've shown you in previous videos, which expresses the oldest surviving evidences of what is present in King Solomon's clavicle, the key, the key of Solomon, the famous esoteric text spoken previously. In this version, we find symbols identical to those we will find a century later in Icelandic magical texts. We are not dealing with casual similarities. Icelandic magical staves or, or symbols have their cultural origins in Jewish esotericism, which in turn influenced the magical arts and occultism of Eastern Europe in the Byzantine Empire, reaching Iceland by the 16th century, and in there, the Solomon-inspired sigils went through artistic developments, giving origins to the more morphologically complex Icelandic magic staves. Perhaps some might still speculate that the Veg Visir was copied from other earlier, earlier lost Icelandic texts, but that is not the case at all. However, it is a creative elaboration of the author who created it, the sorcerer, <laughs> which was based on simpler motifs inherited from the European esoteric tradition, but giving some different artistic touches, thus creating a unique example in the modern history of Icelandic occultism. They are symbols with a specific cultural base, which later in Iceland begin to develop. In fact, the elaboration of these symbols did not stop in the 19th century, because we have, for example, in the 20th century, uh, when Joachim Magnus Eg Egerton, born in 1896 and, and perished in 1966, uh, created his own grimoire originally published in 1940. 
and more recently published, um, translated into English as the Sorceress Screed, creating even more complex and elaborate diagrams and geometric symbology. I have already told you about this book. Some of you might still remember it. Uh, I did a book review of it, in fact, uh, which apparently led the Icelandic Magic Company to run out of stock at the time. It is a more recent example of Icelandic history and the continuation of the elaboration of these symbols, becoming more and more complex and also presenting unique Icelandic characteristics in their morphology. However, its original cultural base is the one I've talked about earlier. Uh, therefore, the um, original Vegvisir, so to speak, that is uh, the one that was transmitted to us by the Huld manuscript, actually consists of two symbols and not just the circular symbol with eight arms. The text on the sides in modern Icelandic is quite clear and speaks of the plural of the symbology presented here, which in an English translation that makes more sense, it says, and I quote, if you wear these characters, staves or symbols, you won't be lost in a storm or bad weather, even if you are unfamiliar with the place. Uh, I have translated this uh, from my own uh, notebook. <laughs> However, uh, the more recent grimoire uh, has a different translation because the text is also different. And I quote, Carry this stave with you and you will hardly ever lose your way in a storm or die of exposure and will find your way even if you are unfamiliar with a place. So, all this to tell you that when we find merchandise with a Vegvisir symbol and surrounded by runes, Remember that this is a mixture of symbols that were not of the same period and have nothing to do with each other. It's, it's actually curious that usually the runes that um, come with the Vegvisir in, in this type of merchandise are the runes used between the 2nd and the 8th centuries of the Common Era, prior to the Viking period, and therefore prior to the set of runes used as a writing system during the culmination of the Iron Age in Scandinavia to write Old Norse. So even when some people say the Vegvisir is of the Viking Age, they aren't even consistent with the choice of runes. <laughs> to finalize this video, I would also like to add another common misconception or a few common misconceptions quite similar in relation to the Vegvisir. Since the Vegvisir is a magical symbol used to find the way, and because of its shape similar to a compass, it has been compared to an actual compass. <laughs> Some authors also insist that, re that it represents a ruder, the wheel of steering a ship, and therefore it was carved on Viking ships to find the way. Well, both the ruder of boats and ships, as well as the compass as we know it, are nautical instruments that have only reached Scandinavia from the 13th century onwards. As I said in other videos, the Vikings used a transverse oar as a ruder. So here it is, further evidence that the Vegvisir is not a Viking symbol in, in, in relation to vessels or anything nautically related of the time. And as I said, the Vegvisir is also not a representation of a Viking compass, as some authors continue to state uh, that the, the Vegvisir was used by the Vikings in several trips as a guide so that the path would not be lost. It is not just the fact that this symbol came to be created long, long after the end of the Viking Age, as we, hope, as we have already seen, but also the Nordic peoples of the Viking Age did not know the compass or the round ruder for navigation. Only from the 13th century onwards did Europeans start to use a magnetized piece of metal as a compass. The Vegvisir has often been also identified as a symbolic representation of the winds as well, but it isn't. All these interpretations, somewhat creative, obviously, just to express a personal idea of what some people want to force to be true, or by some authors who sell a lot of books, merchandise, and even here making videos on YouTube, uh, but it has nothing to do with reality. 
with the historical reality. Don't take this the wrong way, please. Note that I am not against esotericism and interpretations of symbols to use, to, or to be used for their magical character. On the contrary, the problem here is to fashion up ideas without historical basis and without some basis that can really, really help us to understand the symbols and their actual meanings and intentions. If we are really going to use symbols for magic and esotericism, it is better to understand their real historical context. And from there, with a concrete base of knowledge, we can launch ourselves into more plausible interpretations that are really connected to the truth as much as possible so that we can better orient ourselves and not lose our way in the storm of unreliable sources all over the internet. Thus, finding the way even when facing unfamiliar contexts. <laughs> as I said before, the path may be crooked, but let's not twist it more than it is necessary. What we know and need to know about the, this symbol, Vigvisir, is what is expressed in the Huld manuscript we have already discussed here. In fact, these symbols and diagrams are quite common motifs of esoteric seals and sigils, and they have no link with geography or climate. So if the people who create esoteric conceptions and occult gibberish for these symbols were actually knowledgeable in esotericism and occultism itself, would not create these ideas in the first place. And this tells us a thing or two about such people. <laughs> So, in conclusion, in relation to the Vegvisir, it is an Icelandic magical symbol, a Galdra Stafur, magic stave, which appears in the Huld manuscript in the second half of the 19th century. The Galdra Stafir themselves, magic staves, appear for the first time in Icelandic grimoires, magic books, spell books of the Renaissance period, so it is not possible to trace the presence of these symbols in previous centuries throughout the Nordic cultural world. These symbols only appear in the 16th century in Iceland, initially very simple and stylized, as I have shown in previous videos, and then began to develop and become more complex in their morphological presentation until the 20th century. <laughs> Uh, there are no pre-16th century grimoires in Iceland. Uh, the oldest was created at the beginning of the 16th century and contains only a few symbols, very similar to the Greek Byzantine manuscript Harley 5596, as I have also shown in previous videos. So there is no relationship with Vikings or with anything Nordic from medieval times. The Vegvisir, like other similar symbols of Icelandic culture, are the product of an Icelandic tradition that developed and innovated the typically um, symbolism of Renaissance esotericism. Uh, and don't forget that the original symbol is made of two elements, an upper one in a circular shape whose arms are decorated with other signs, and the other one below and developed horizontally. That's why those who make uh, tattoos of this symbol have done it wrongly. <laughs> forgetting the horizontal symbology. The Gvisir is not only the circular symbol, but also the other one, or is uh, the other horizontal symbol below. All right, my dear friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And may it be useful, even if it's just as a warning, to think about what you want to have tattooed on your person and research about symbols that are aesthetically appealing to you. <laughs> know their meanings, purposes, and historical background. And don't simply rely on gibberish, which has been spread constantly to the point of becoming seemingly common knowledge. Once again, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje.